And one of the things that I found really surprising was that the nutrient retention in canned foods is so high um, that there are some canned foods that are actually more nutrient dense than their fresh counterparts. All right, hit me, Producer Potts. Okay, can we talk about canned fish? Yeah. I know, thanks to Nutrivore and learning from you, that it is actually a safe option for me and it's affordable for me. However, I was looking at the Nutrivore scores and some canned fish is more nutrient dense than fresh and other times it's less. Is it getting too far in the weeds if I always pick the highest score or do I get enough of the benefits coming from seafood from just like my canned tuna and like also why would canned even be higher? That was really mind blowing to me. Yeah. So I think big picture, one of the things that was a surprise to me from the Nutrivore score calculation. So briefly, the Nutrivore score is a measurement of total nutrients per calorie. 33 nutrients go into that calculation. So because it's just math, it's an objective way to understand the nutrient density of foods. And one of the things that I found really surprising was that the nutrient retention in canned foods is so high um, that there are some canned foods that are actually more nutrient dense than their fresh counterparts. But even when they're not, I mean, they're they're in the same range. Like the difference is not meaningful. So your question of, am I getting too far in the weeds if I'm comparing the Nutrivore score of canned versus fresh? We'll talk about like what's cool in canned fish, but yes, that is too far in the weeds. Like to look at the Nutrivore score of uh, broccoli raw versus broccoli boiled without salt versus broccoli boiled with salt. Like you can look up all of those Nutrivore scores on the website at Nutrivore.com slash search and you can, you can get super nerdy with it. But those differences are not meaningful uh, in terms of meeting our nutritional needs, which is the goal of Nutrivore. Uh, or in terms of how that food is going to benefit our health. What matters is that fish is a really important, like health promoting food that has, especially like long chain omega-3 fats that are harder to get enough of from other foods, that there's a huge wealth of scientific evidence showing that eating more seafood reduces risk, especially of cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease, like Alzheimer's disease and like age-related cognitive decline. So fish is such a a healthy food to consume so whatever food you like and is convenient for you and is affordable for you like that's that's the fish to consume so getting into the, like if i cook it this way it'll have more nutrient density or if i eat it canned it'll have less or more it, it really doesn't matter um it doesn't even matter what type of fish you're eating they're all beneficial uh, there's even studies looking at uh, white fish. So I think we have this idea that like all of the fatty fish are the most um, important from a health perspective. Nope. Lots of benefits to, to white fish as well. And there's even studies looking at the benefits of farmed fish. So it doesn't have to be wild either. The farmed fish have all the same benefits of, of wild fish because they have all the same nutrients. So, um, so yeah, it, it is really getting too far in the weeds to be looking at the, com that comparison, but there is just to just just to be like a, a nerdy, nerdy Nutribor right now. <laughs> um, the reason why some canned fish is quite a lot more nutrient dense than the fresh is it's always the canned fish where that you the bones are small enough that they're in the can and you end up eating the bones. So it's like canned salmon with the bones, it's uh, sardines. It's those fish that are more nutrient dense canned compared to like roughly the same or maybe, you know, like a very small difference. And it's because of all of the extra nutrients, some minerals, some collagen that we're getting from the bones because the canning process makes the bones soft enough to eat. Like I think a lot of people don't even know that they're eating the bones when they eat. That's fascinating. The canned no, salmon. I wouldn't, wouldn't so, know. So yeah. yes, it's too much in the weeds. However, <laughs> if you like canned fish with the bones, like I used to... I thought the bones were the best part. So if I would make like a canned salmon salad when I was a kid, um, I would like eat the bones first and then make the salmon salad with the rest of the can because I thought the bones were so tasty. They're why canned fish is such a fantastic source of calcium. It is very specifically only those canned fish where you're eating the bones. So think sardines, salmon, mackerel. Um, so 
fish where like the bone is the bone is in the can and if you pay the extra money for the like boneless skinless fillets you're missing out on that nutrition granted if that's the only way you like it then you're benefiting from that nutrition because you're eating it so uh gotcha. so like again it's it's you can get those nutrients from other foods um dairy is our most concentrated food source of calcium but if you don't eat dairy canned canned fish with the bones is very very similarly calcium dense plus you're getting all of that other special nutrition that that seafood has uh so that is kind of like your next best source of calcium so it sounds like cheap canned fish is pretty great absolutely <laughs> um and it's probably worth since we're talking about canned foods People are probably twitching about BPA, I would imagine. Yes, but you have covered that in uh, a in very so nice, much detail. in-depth video, which I will make sure to uh, link here as well for everyone. Aww, so. Thanks, Producer Pots. <laughs> Got you covered. <laughs> so uh, cliff, cliff Notes, if you don't want to go watch the big, long video, you don't need to worry about the BPA. It's fine. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. So where can we learn more about the nutrient um, differences in between like canned, fresh, and also like uh, quality wise? Um, where can people go learn that if they're curious for that information for themselves without getting too far in the weeds? <laughs> so if you if you just are like, whoa, math be math, and that's pretty cool. I want to be a nerdy, nerdy Nutrivore too. Yeah, go like start at the website, go to Nutriver.com slash search and just start searching up Nutriver scores. It's fascinating. Um, what I find so fascinating, so just to give a little bit of context, um, there's no there's no normalization of the score. So there's no there's no like we make the highest score a hundred or a thousand and everything is kind of like scattered in between. So just the math is the math. Um, and you can actually learn all about the math. Uh, there as well there's like a link to a site that explains all of the science that goes into that calculation um but the highest nutrivore score is 14,744 and the lowest is zero so just to give you a sense of the spread that being said the median so the middle is 180 so half of scores are higher than 180 and half of scores are lower wow and what would be like a uh, like a perfect score? Do you know what I mean? Like if you were to get exactly 100% of the daily value of each nutrient that goes into the score, is assuming a 2000 calorie per day diet, a perfect score would be like 164, like 100 or 165, something like that. Um, so generally we say like any score over, over about 150 is a food that is contributing more nutrients than calories to the overall diet. That's kind of the the cusp that we we draw based on average uh, caloric intake um, and like the essential nutrients versus non-essential nutrients that go into the score. So uh, when you see a score, like a lot of fish is in the like six to 900 range. When you see those scores, like, Yes, you 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 might want to compare it to like these crazy, unusual, very low energy density foods or all the top foods, but compare it to 150 or 180, right? Those those are more like that gives you the context for understanding how valuable a food like canned tuna really is. Um, so just to give like some context, if you wanted to just like peruse the entire Nutribor score database and just rather than search it and then find all the foods that have the word tuna in the description, right. uh, you can just peruse. That is a uh, bonus for people who join my Patreon at the Nutribor nerds tier or higher. So the $7 a month tier or higher. And you can download like a table. It's a 227 page table, I think, of the entire like 8,000 <laughs> food entire Nutriverse score database and there's one version where it's organized alphabetically and then there's one version where it's organized by Nutriverse score from highest to lowest love so that, that love is that. also like just fascinating if you really want to get into the weeds of like comparing Nutriverse scores that's the place to do it if you want to just like understand foods and you don't like you you want to avoid those weeds in my book, there's 700 Nutrivore scores. It's 
mainly whole foods and like really common cooking ingredients in one of the appendices. And there's just one score for food. There's just, there's just one kind of tuna, skipjack tuna, which is the most common kind found in, actually there might be yellowfin tuna too. I might be lying right now, but it's, it's, it's easy. It's an easy comparison. There's just tuna <laughs> and not canned and baked and baked dry heat versus, you know, like it's it, not all of those differences that you're going to find if you look at the entire database. There's just broccoli comma raw, right? That's it. Um, there's different types of mushrooms and different varieties of apples, but it's just going to give you the basically the score for the raw whole version of that food. And that will help you look like get out of the weeds and just understand the relative value of these different foods. But also we don't want to only use the Nutrifor score as our like only criteria for choosing foods and why is also laid out extensively in my book. So um, in terms of just understanding that calculation and and how to use it, um, again, that that's go that's get the book. This is for yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor Sarah. Thank you.